Welcome, my special friends. Welcome to another episode of our heart-powered, inspiring interview series for you. And as you know, every single time, we introduce you to an amazing guest, entrepreneur, speaker, someone from around the globe that is inspiring you. And every, one, every time I talk to this lady, she definitely inspires me. Who is she? Who is our guest today? Her name is Paulina Tenner. And Paulina is an entrepreneur, but not just an entrepreneur like any other. She's also an angel investor. She is a TEDx feature, a speaker, and she's the founder of Grant Tree. She really started with a purpose to help tech startups navigate the complex world of government funding. And since 2010, the team has raised over 200 million pounds for more than 600 tech startups and scale-ups using government funding schemes. Grantry is also an open culture company which pioneered to set self-salary scheme. Can you imagine where people actually define how much they're earning? That's amazing. And she really implemented an empowering culture governed by holacracy. She's also the author of Laid Bear, What the Business Leader Learned from the Stripper. I definitely want to read that one, which is describing leadership lessons that uh, Paulina has learned as a burlesque dancer coming out in January. And you can already order it. And we're going to share the link with you afterwards. So it's amazing to have you with us, Paulina. Welcome. Oh, Monique, I'm so touched that you invited me to this uh, heart-centered conversation. I really look forward to getting stuck into some of the business topics and maybe even burlesque topics. We'll see what comes up. But uh, it's a real pleasure it. to be here today. Thank you. I love it. And I, I, I so honor your amazing mission and work of, uh, you know, really supporting startups and scale ups. I mean, it's so important. And, you know, again, so and also even running your own platform in a really innovative, sophisticated way, really impressive. But tell us what are let's jump in. Right. Everyone is saying, oh, my God, I, I want to talk for decades to Bolina and I can learn so much from her. Why don't we start by giving people your three major uh, hints and tips of what you do right now to bring your platform, your business and everything you do to a different level. OK, so um, I prioritize self-care. That is one of the things that I do. So I invest time and energy in myself so that my cup is full so that I can help others. Um, I have really invested in my business culture a lot. So as you mentioned, pe people in my business set their own salaries and uh, all the financials are transparent. So everybody knows what everybody else is earning, what the business is spending money on, etc. So it's really the kind of culture that embraces wholesomeness and humanity and that really trusts people, treats them as adults that they are um, and gives them an opportunity to participate in the company governance and um, shaping the future of the company. Um, and also I have surrounded myself with people that are more successful, more accomplished, uh, more inspiring, I find, than, than I am and I'm learning from them every single day. So um, those would be the three things and my top three. Why don't we go deeper into each in every one of them? Why don't you share with us how exactly you apply them and how they are making a difference to your life and your business? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I have um, suffered over the years with mental health challenges, with, which many entrepreneurs do. Actually, there is data on it. Um, a lot of us um, struggle with depression, anxiety. Um, I've had eating disorders as a teenager and following that an onset of depression um, that's kind of continued and been kind of on and off over years and decades. So for me, it's super important to really prioritize wellness. And I'm really committed to this. So I treat it very seriously, almost like a project, which means that I have daily and weekly actions that I do to really take care of myself. So um, I see a therapist, I have a coach, um, I am very serious about my fitness, I exercise every day. I'm very serious about my diet. I have a protein rich, um, low sugar diet. Um, I um, have a weekly massage, which is like a self-care, a lovely kind of thing to do for myself. 
and I have a kind of network of people who are, as a mutual friend, Harriet Whaley Cohen say, uh, would say, my cheerleaders. So people that really believe in me, people that support me, that are kind of helping me to take care of myself in one way or other. So that would be the self care priority. Uh, the culture priority. So in my book, Laid Bear, uh, which, as you said, is coming out in January, um, I talk quite a lot about workplaces of the future in the first part and in the second part about leadership of the future, which is all about combining your masculine and feminine leadership traits and integrating both of them to be a more powerful leader. And I think that in my business, I have managed, you know, it's always an ongoing journey, but I've integrated the, you know, drive and care for commercial sustainability, which is obviously important to all of us who are in business, with values, well being of the people, kind of focus on creating the kind of workplace. Um, where people feel seen, heard, um, where they can genuinely kind of hone in on their mastery and work on their weaknesses as well. Um, so that is super important to me almost in kind of any venture I get involved in to combine the focus on profitability with the focus on the well-being of the people who work in this business and the kind of social mission kind of legacy that we have as a business beyond just adding to our clients bottom line which is obviously important but like what kind of social impact we have by being who are we as a business and how does that impact our local community and our maybe other people in my industry mm -hmm. so that would be number two before we go to the next one yeah. i'm really curious because uh, that is quite an innovative concept where people define themselves how much they're earning so yeah. can you tell us how does that work and uh you know again how did you implement that um yes so um it's been a process and it's definitely um a process that i've described in quite a bit of detail in my book so if you're interested um in how this works definitely refer to my book um we started with uh, financials being transparent pretty much on from the outset of my business when it was born in 2010 people like 18 or 18 months into the existence of the business my business partner and I hired the first person and then the team started growing today it's about 50 and um, we decided that we were going to make the business accounts accessible to the new joiners people that are joining that you know, uh, we're not going to hide financial information from them. And that, ha that that has had kind of really far reaching consequences because it's really minimized the amount of politics when you think about it and kind of those water cooler conversations that people have because in traditional corporate hierarchical businesses, often people who are higher up the chain have access to more information than people who are lower down. And that kind of generates power struggles and and kind of political games that people play sometimes. So that's been there from the start. But how when, does that work? You know, how are people actually defining how much they're earning? How? Yeah, of course. So um, in terms of how the process actually works, we have gone through several stages. One of them was before we were ready to give people that power, we had a committee which decided what everybody is going to earn and how they're going to be placed on the pay matrix, um, considering their um, experience, so considering um, the an uncertainty of their position. So like, what is the amount of uncertainty they have to deal in their everyday work? And what is the amount of complexity, which is kind of also translated to experience, what is the amount of complexity in their work? So that was kind of the first step that we took. And um, maybe two or three years after, we were ready to, instead of having a kind of committee comprised of um, different team members deciding salaries across the board, we decided that we were ready to give people the power to actually choose their own salaries. And how it works is that um, 
Firstly, somebody who is changing their salary needs to have completed six months worth of monthly self-assessments where they kind of set their own goals and report on how they delivered on them. And they also have a peer, a colleague who helps them kind of reality check their own self-assessment. Um, and they need to do six of those. So there needs to be kind of a continuous uh, conscious effort to better themselves for a given period of time. And then at the moment, at the time when they're ready to um, uh, change their salary, they need to do an extensive market research to find out what is the car current value of the job market. So they usually speak to recruiters. We've had even people that have um, interviewed for competitors just to you know find out what might be a uh, you know what are the what is the realistic salary they could expect with their current skills um and they um then work in collaboration with the so-called lead link or the kind of sort of kind of head of the department within the which they operate um to uh, receive feedback from them and one other colleague and to also make sure that the company has resources to up the salary because it's usually the, it goes upwards. In one case, it went downwards when a lady that we had on, had on board actually switched departments. She decided to have a career change and she took on a more junior role in marketing, whereas she used to have a senior role in client management. Mm -hmm. So, but it usually obviously goes upwards. So there needs to be the self-assessment, there needs to be the um, an, an effort to really uh, estimate, realistically speaking, how much they're worth on a job market. And then there needs to be kind of a discussion and collaboration with a budget holder in their given department and or circle. You know, we operate as a, as a holocratic company, as you mentioned, um, and the decision is made kind of by them. So they're responsible for that decision, knowing that it's going to be in full transparency with their team members. So if they decide to pay themselves an unrealistic sum, for example, they will receive plenty of feedback from every direction, you know, and they will have to handle any conflicts that arise. So people typically communicate with a lot of other people on the team um, to find out, you know, not what well, it's important how it's going to be received, but not to kind of really influence their decision, but to reality check whether what they're planning to pay themselves is realistic and fair. I so love that will be that in the shortcut. Obviously, it's described <laughs> in the book. Quite a bit more detail. <laughs> amazing. So self care, you know, uh, an amazing culture and uh, uh, self governed uh, payment of your team members. Let's jump into the third one. Um. So self. Sorry, the third one. Uh, you 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 shared three best yeah. practices mm -hmm. with us, right? So the first one was um, how to. Okay. Yeah, so the first one was, uh, yeah, you remember them. So the first one was self-care. The second one was, uh, you know, uh, how you increase culture and uh, uh, or improve your culture based on holocratic principles and self-governed payment. Uh, and the third one, let's jump into the third one again. Uh, just remind me what it was because it just like richly escaped my mind. Okay, I need to edit this one because I don't remember yeah. either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay cool and i just realized because i didn't have the form in front of me i actually picked different ones that i put on the form so i don't know th does it make sense to re-record this or do you think it's okay uh, you know what let's cut it out let's cut it out okay let, let's cut it i cut this part out okay let's jump to the next question uh because i don't uh, i have to say paulina i was so excited by everything you were saying that i forgot the third one as well <laughs> okay so so well, do we want to start again no, 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 we, no, no, we don't start again. So what we do is we uh, give me just one quick second. Let me think, let me think, because if I think about it for a second, I will remember. So self-care, culture, um, oh, surrounding myself with people who are better than me, that one. All right, okay. Yes. And it's okay that if they're different to those, let me load, give me a second to load up the form that I actually sent to you, because... Uh, you know what, I can quickly give you what you gave me. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's they're slightly different in the form. Because as, as soon as you asked me that I question, I was like, "Ooh, I didn't expect that the questions were going to be exactly the same as in the form." Um, so, and I didn't remember. But what it I doesn't matter. So, if the third one is you hire people that are better than you. Uh, so here is what. Let me share also this in the uh, here. Here is what you said. Okay. Um, 
And when I asked you about a habit, you spoke about uh, self-care, okay? And while we are at it, and while we are actually interrupting the conversation, I wanted to say something, uh, you know, I wanted to say something uh, specific because I gonna also ask you the question. Um, I also gonna ask you the question on uh, what is one thing you want the audience members to do? And, yeah, that uh, I would know and, what I put on the form and yeah. that was to implement transparent financials. Yeah, but you know, the thing is that is quite high level. We always, it's if we want it as concrete as if you would say, uh, like, uh, you know. Something uh, simple to do every day. You like, mean. like it should be like, go into the kitchen and grab a green apple. It should okay. be as concrete as that because we like people to do it right away on that day. Yeah. You see what I mean? So when you say, say a lot of financials. people say gratitude journaling. Sorry? Write three things that you're grateful for in your business. No, no, you can take implement transparent financials. I love that. But what is the first step to implementing transparent to implement financial transparent uh, financials? What could that be? Like write down how much how much money you make this month, or I don't know. I mean, you know. Yeah. What what could be the very first step? Okay, so maybe um, load up your payroll and decide um, who you're going to have to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with before you implement, before you reveal everybody's salary. Most of the people that we have in our community don't actually even have big teams yet. Okay, that's important. Okay, so that's they're important. actually, a lot of them are quite early birdies, um, you know, uh, or there, a lot of them are, have been in business for like quite a while, but they're still like solopreneurs working a lot with freelancers. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So okay. implement transparent financials okay. in their business, mm -hmm. what would that mean? Okay, so what, this is something to do today, yeah? Yes. Can I say, in, uh, order a book? And read it or the a book that i've that i find no, that, that, that would be marketing um uh, you mean like your book no 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 a so, book that I, a business book that i recommend which talks about open culture it's by ricardo semler yeah uh you could do that um you know you could say hey you know one of the things i did was reading this book so buy this book but what was one step in that book yeah. that that got you going yeah very good question like i'm thinking if those people are very small teams maybe implement transparent financials is is not that relevant to them because transparent financials is relevant it's very to relevant to them because the, the, maybe it's not transparent financials uh, in terms of let your team members see what each other is earning but rather you know a lot of them are not very transparent even with their own financials Sometimes when I start working with them, I ask them, how much money have you made this year? They don't know. <laughs> wow. It's mm -hmm. crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's rather, you know, but again, may maybe it's something related to what you are, what we are discussing here. And we are discussing self-care. We are discussing, you know, uh, uh, corporate culture, culture and surrounding yourself with people who are better than you. Yeah. So, you know, think about someone today that maybe you think like, is Reach out to one person that's more in that that inspires you and ask them ask them exactly. for someone for that reason. maybe they want to become yeah. right. Think about someone that inspires you that you want to become or you want to you you feel is better than you and what you're doing and ask uh, invite them to lunch next week. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, we got it. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Good. So let me ask again. Wow, Paulina, that sounds amazing. You know, whole self currency salary uh, process and whole holacracy. I know I met the founder many years ago. I mean, this approach is just really mm. a very innovative way to, to grow your business and get everyone along the way. It's, it's amazing. And, uh, you know, there was a third thing that you mentioned. You said you also surround yourself with people that are better than you. Do you want to say more about that and maybe give a concrete story or concrete example? of how it helped you in your business. Absolutely, so that applies to um, friends. I've got some friends who are really successful as business people, um, really amazing people, and I love to hang out with them and kind of like absorb that kind of energy of success, of financial success as well. Um, and this applies to business advisors, mentors, and even to people that I hire. So um, I'll give you a con concrete example. 
Um, I've hired um, somebody uh, a couple of years back who is in their 50s, I think. So it is the, he is the oldest person on our team. Um, he's got really extensive experience. And I hired him using this process known as subject object interview. And it's um, an interview um, format that we use to determine somebody's um, levels of personal maturity actually so it's nothing to do with um capability professional capabilities this particular stage of interview it's all about determining whether that person can will thrive within the kind of culture that we have so um it's derived from the work of a scientist harvard scientist called robert keegan and it's about finding out through a conversation like an open-ended con questions and like a really interesting conversation which can get quite deep um how much a person is a, a sort of what's called self-authoring individual so how much they're kind of like really grounded in their self of self sense of self their values um as opposed to being kind of swayed, for example, by different environments that they operate in mm -hmm. and being somebody different at work and different at home. And like we are looking for the kind of people that are exhibiting kind of a certain level of um, personal development, really, and being able to handle a significant um, degree of complexity. So I hired that person. Um, he's called Andy. And he's yeah adding a lot of value to the business, and he's definitely better in many things than I am. So I've hired a lot of people that are better uh, on um, yeah. Yeah, one, one, many levels. One, one thing is hiring people that are better than us, but I think there's other ways also to surround ourselves with people that are better than us, right? Absolutely. The one is definitely hiring is a really critical one. What other way? What other ways are you surrounding yourself with people that are better than you? Having friendships, friendships, um, people that you hang out with, you know, there is a saying which I think is very true that you are the combination of, I think it's five or six people that you surround yourself with, that you tend to hang out with, because you kind of absorb their vibration, really, their way of um, seeing the world and the way they kind of see opportunities and how they approach life. Um, so um, just figure out how much time on average, who are the five people maybe in your life you're spending your most time with? And that will tell you what is your current kind of level of ambition, vision, and um, et cetera. So I definitely kind of, um, yeah, uh, do my best really to on a weekly basis, meet with people firstly from my immediate network and then from a network further out who really inspire me. I love that. And uh, Paulina, every time we run an amazing interview, we also don't only want to inspire everyone that is with us today. We also love them to take action because as you know, once we take action, things start shifting, right? So what is, the little, what is the little challenge or the, the action that you invite everyone that is with us today to take right away today? Sure. So I invite you to ideally today or this week um pick one person that really inspires you so maybe not richard branson but somebody that um is kind of within your reach somebody that maybe you know indirectly or maybe even directly and invite them out to lunch just um find a really nice way uh obviously coming from your heart, because this is all about being a heart-centered entrepreneur, to congratulate them, acknowledge them, congratulate them for what you do, for what they do, tell them about the impact they, they've already had on your life, and say that you would love to, as a thank you, um, uh, offer them lunch and uh, go have that meeting. And report That's back, amazing. obviously. Report back. <laughs> Sounds amazing. And absolutely report back because everyone that's watching this right now is also part of our Hot Power Global Nation. And uh, in there, okay, share with us, okay, who are you uh, reaching out to? Who are you having lunch with? Well, and, uh, you know, I definitely going to play along, Paulina. I'm going to think about who 
what are people I want to have lunch with next week? And I wonder, are you free for lunch, by the way? <laughs> I would have, I'm in London. So at any, at any point we could meet up, I would definitely I know. I even buy each other lunch. We can meet twice. <laughs> We're definitely going to meet again. And yeah. uh, so, um, Paulina, I'm sure everyone here also wants to have probably a virtual lunch with you at some point or connect with you in another way. Lots of lunch is coming. Yay. I love lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone is definitely very curious about where can they find your book, but most importantly, where can they find you if they would like to connect with you, with you further? Absolutely. So it's super easy because I'm at Paulina Tenner, T-E-N-N-E-R on all socials. So <laughs> LinkedIn, uh, t- Twitter, uh, Instagram, got a Facebook page as well. I'm on the Clubhouse where I host rooms um, about fundraising uh, for entrepreneurs. So definitely reach out, connect with me. I love talking to interesting people. I love it. And I think also your book, I mean, if, who wouldn't want to read it like Laid Bear, what a uh, business leader or, you know, entrepreneur known for being a stripper. I mean, who wouldn't want to read that, right? So I love that book. Coming I out really and- hope that you enjoy it. And actually, I would love to hear from you once you've um, read it what are your comments and what what inspired you the most um you can get it on paulinatenner.com slash book and it's available on for pre-orders right now um and one actually thing that i'm offering for all the entrepreneurs listening if you would like to um have a since i'm also an angel investor a um pitch feedback session with me. I'm offering those free of charge, half an hour with with me on Zoom to anyone who pre-orders the book before the end of this year. Oh, wow. That's like a sweet promise. Great. That sounds amazing. So thank you for that. And uh, thank you all for being with us again, for, for being our loyal tribe, for checking in with us on every interview. I know Paulina definitely inspired you today. And, uh, Again, uh, Paulina, you want to run it off with a final inspirational message? Yes, of course. Um, Love yourself first uh, so that you can love the whole world. I feel touched. Thank you. I definitely love myself and I love you and I love all of you that are here and part of our tribe. So thank you, Paulina, for being with us and for the amazing work you do in so many different dimensions. And all of you, as I always say, keep keep creating your magic and uh, speak up, scale up, impact the world in your own powerful way. And soon enough, you're going to be back with another hot part inspiring interview. So keep an eye out on that. And for now, just have an amazing week. Take action on our little challenge for you, right? And we'll be in touch very soon. All the best for now. Bye.